The factor theorem. All right. If you didn't watch my video on synthetic division and the remainder theorem, you need to go back, watch those videos. It's required for the factor theorem. Nothing will make sense without it. All right. The factor theorem. So we had this silly little theorem that said, uh, and it was the remainder theorem. It said f of c is the remainder when f of x is divided by x minus c. Okay. Silly little thing. Um, and then Previously, we had said, if f of c is 0, then x equals c is a 0 of f of x. And we said that that meant a few things. It meant that it was an x-intercept. Um, and we dealt with that in the polynomial section. But if we combine these ideas together here, and we say, hey, we know f of 0, <laughs> we know if f of c is equal to 0, by the remainder theorem, by the remainder theorem, we have that the remainder when f of x is divided by x minus c is zero. what does it mean to have a remainder of zero? When you divide by something and have a remainder of zero, that means you're a factor, right? A, a factor of whatever that is. We do this with numbers. Um, 12 divided by four, this is three with no remainder. There's nothing left over. And four is a factor of 12. So, oh, I should say is zero is zero. Um, so if the remainder is zero, when we divide by x minus c, that's going to tell us that x minus c is a factor of f of x. And it gives you the factor theorem. And the factor theorem says exactly that. If f of c is zero, this is a double direction arrow. Got lazy and didn't put it in there, but it's an arrow that goes in both directions because if this is true, then this is true, and the other direction as well. If f of c is 0, x minus c is a factor of f of x. And this is really interesting and fun because if you com combine it with the remainder theorem, um, with using the remainder theorem the way we did in the previous video, which was using synthetic division, it allows you a really cool shortcut to tell if something's a factor of f of x because you can divide by x minus c to find f of c. And if it so turns out that f of c is 0, then you'll know that you have a factor of f of x. Let's see it in action, because you really do need to see it in action. Um, boop, 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 boop. You need to see it in action. Again, if you haven't seen the remainder theorem video, go watch that, or you're going to be confused. All right. So we're asking, is x plus 5 a factor of this polynomial, 2x to the fourth plus 12x cubed plus 6x squared minus 5x plus 75? And we are told by the factor theorem that this is going to be true, right? This is true if f of c is equal to 0. And in our case, c is the opposite sign of this, opposite sign of positive 5, if f of negative 5 equals 0. So x plus 5 is a factor of this polynomial if f of negative 5 equals 0. So we want to find f of negative 5. And we're going to use the remainder theorem and synthetic division. You could just plug it straight in, but that's not what we're doing here. So we're trying to find f of negative 5.
That means we're putting negative five on the outside of our synthetic division. Everything is in order. All the powers are accounted for. So 75 will end up here. We have two, 12, six, negative five. Let's do synthetic division. Pull the two down. Two times negative five is negative 10. 12 minus 10 is two. Two times negative five is negative 10. Six minus 10 is negative four. Negative five times negative four is 20. Negative five plus 20 is 15. 15 times negative five is negative 75. 75 minus 75 is zero. So the remainder is zero. And that tells us a few things. That means that f of negative five is zero. And if f of negative five is zero, by the factor theorem, we can say that x plus five is a factor of f of x. What does it mean to be a factor of f of x? It means that if we could factor this guy, if we could write him in his factored form, one of the factors would be x plus five, right? And then there would be some other stuff in here, but f of x could be written in such a way where x plus five is a factor. So here asking ourselves, is x minus four a factor of this? We're setting up oops, synthetic division. Here, we need to find f of four. If f of four is zero, then x minus four is a factor. So we're finding f of four, so we're putting four on the outside. We have negative three, two, negative one, two. This arrow's kind of in the way. Pull down the two. Four times two is eight. Negative one plus eight is seven. Four times seven is 28. Two plus 28 is 30. Four times 30 is 120. Negative three plus 120 is 117, which is not zero. So x minus four is not a factor of f of x. X minus four is not a factor. So you get how that works, right? And this allows us a really, a really nice like set of things. Oh goodness, my iPad, hold on. Here we go. <laughs> this allows us a set of things, which if one of them is true, they're all true. So one of these five things is true, then they are all true. If f of c is zero, then x equals c is a zero slash x intercept of f of x. Then x minus c is a factor of f of x. If you divide f of x by x minus c, there's a remainder of zero. And you can write f of x as x minus c times something else. These are all synonymous with one another through uh, a link of theorems. If I want to put these in, um, as an example, it'd be like me saying, if x minus seven is a factor of f of x, if I start with that statement, here's all that I get to say. If x minus seven is a factor of f of x, then f of positive seven is equal to zero. Also, x equal to seven is an x-intercept slash zero of f of x. I can say that 
when f of x is divided by x minus 7, the remainder is 0. And I know whatever f of x is, it can be written as x minus 7 times stuff. So these are just all synonymous. Let's use this in a problem. So for the polynomial below, 3 is a 0. Express g of x as a product of linear factors. So linear factors are going to be factors like x minus 7. A linear factor has at most a power of 1, so there's no x squared in here. Um, it's just power of 1 for x. And then a product, meaning that they're all multiplied together. All right, hopefully I have gone through and edited this video to <laughs> take out uh, the example I have on the worksheet, which I am simply too lazy to fix at this moment. Uh, just works out to be really nasty numbers. Um, so we're going to do different numbers instead on this one. And I'm going to give us a different polynomial. Please write this one down instead. And instead of 3 being a 0, we're going to have negative 5 be a 0. I'll just make sure to edit this video, hopefully. <laughs> All right, so this example. For the polynomial below, negative 5 is a 0. g of x is equal to x cubed plus 8x squared plus 11x minus 20. Express g of x as a product of linear factors. So. We know that negative 5 is a 0. And if x equals negative 5 is a 0, that's going to mean that, as we saw above here, x plus 5 is a factor of g of x. I don't know why that disappeared. It's a factor of g of x. And if it's a factor of g of x, that's going to mean that we can write f of x as x plus 5 times something. x plus 5 times something. In general, a polynomial can be written as the quotient, and a polynomial, I, I mean the dividend, and let me go ahead and just write this in those words then. The dividend, dividend, can be written as the quotient times the divisor plus the remainder. We have this additional fact that if we know that x plus 5 is a factor, it means that f of x divided by x plus 5 has a remainder of 0. No has remainder 0. In this case, f of x is our dividend. x plus 5 is our divisor. And by f of x, I guess I mean g of x. I really should have just made this guy g. I really should have made this function f is what I meant to say. g of x, g of x. All right. So g of x is our dividend. The divisor 
is x plus 5. The remainder we said was 0. I can just, you know, cross it out. That's going to mean that our, di our uh, dividend, x cubed plus 8x squared plus 11x minus 20, can be written as the quotient that results from dividing g of x by x plus 5 times x plus 5. To find this quotient, we're, we're literally just doing, we're doing polynomial division. We're doing synthetic division here. We're dividing g of x by x plus five. We're going to use synthetic division. So if we are dividing by x plus 5. If we're doing g of x divided by x plus 5, we put negative 5 on the outside. We've set up our synthetic. This is our dividend up here and right here. Pull down the 1. 5 times negative, or negative 5 times 1 is negative 5. 8 minus 5 is 3. 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. 11 minus 15 is negative 4. Negative 5 times negative 4 is positive 20. Negative 20 plus 20 is 0. So the quotient, the thing that's left over, the quotient is x squared. We begin one degree less than the dividend, x squared plus 3x minus 4. So our polynomial can be written as, I'll put x plus 5 first, x plus 5 times x squared plus 3x minus 4. Right. Our dividend, x cubed, just copy you, boop, 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 boop. copy, bring down, beautiful. This is our quotient. This is our divisor. We can factor x squared plus 3x minus 4. We get x plus 5 times x plus 4 times x minus 1. And that is our final factorization of g of x. So again, the idea is if we know that, if we know one of the zeros, if we know negative 5 is a 0, we can divide this entire thing by x plus 5 the leftover stuff, the leftover quotient, we could then factor. And that'll give us our linear products that make up g of x. All right, I know that problem is kind of difficult, but that's what it is. Um, practice, practice, practice on these. If you have questions, send me an email. Otherwise, I will see you in another video. Bye.